Hello everybody, welcome to the last part of the PyTrans tutorial series. In this one, what we're going to focus on is this section that's on the main page of Google Trends, if you scroll a bit below, the recently trending section. If you click on the more trending searches, what you will figure out is that there is a daily search trend and real time search trends for the country that is selected. Now with the PyTrends library, we can only access these daily search trends, but we can iterate over a list of countries to figure out what is it that is trending or has been trending in the recent past um, in those countries. We cannot extract the number of searches. We can only extract the search term. So if I take a look at PyTrends, there is this one line, which is PyTrends.trending searches and then PN equals the country. So this is the only part that we need to extract. Um, it is mentioned here that it's trending searches in real time. Unfortunately, that's not 100% true because there is a separate tab for the real time searches. And with PyTrends, what is being extracted is the daily search trend. So it is not that far from the real time, but it's not the real time searches. Uh, if you compare uh, what, what is trending in the last 24 hours in US, it's completely different than this part here. So the daily search terms is something that we can extract. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this part, which is pytrends.trending searches. And then I'm going to create a new function, define trending searches. Now, normally what we would like to do in this case is we would like to pause the country. So do we want to find these daily searches for the US? Do we want to find them for India, for the Netherlands or whatever the country is? And we want to be able to reuse this function again and again. And this is what the function would do. So it would access the trending searches for the country. So instead of PN United States, we can have country. Then ideally we would like to store this into a um, some variable and we would like to, let's say, print all the data that we get from this function. Now what country would be is something that we would specify. Let's have a list of countries instead of one country. And this, the way you would specify a country is, first of all, all the letters have to be lowercase. So if you have capital letter at the beginning, it would run into an error, but let's do that just so we can see that that's something that doesn't work. Um, and then if you have countries with more than one uh, name or one word, so such as the United States, the separation should be done with underscore. So United States, same goes for United Kingdom. Um, I'm going to use Netherlands and Let's use Brazil. So let's have these five countries in our list. So what we would like to do is for every country that we have in our countries list, um, what we would like to have is first print the country name. So with what is the country that we get these results for and then run this trending searches function, which basically finds the trending searches and then prints the data. Now, if we do it as it is, we'll get an issue for India because it has a capital I. But let's run it just so we can see the error. Now, this is what it would look like. So it, it correctly prints the country. So that, that line is executed fine. But then this is the part that um, unfortunately doesn't work. And as a trending searches for the country because the key error is the country itself. Now, if we change that to lowercase, then um, it would work fine. So the outcome looks like this. So you have India and then you have the top 20 daily uh, trends. So basically, if we take a look at how it's structured in Google Trends, what you have is this is the number one uh, in our results. So Joe Clark for, for United States, for example, then this would be so zero, one, two, three, four. And then once it goes um, to do the top 20, that's where it stops. So you can only extract the top 20, but that those results might be from today. It might be from yesterday. It might be from two days ago. So that that's the information that we do not get, but it's the last 
um, trending daily trends. Um, so if we go back to our script, this would not work. Maybe what we would like to have is not 20 results, but print head. So the top three or top five results. So now what we would do is we would print the country, print the top five results, and then let's have a empty line. Maybe we can have an empty line in, even between here. So we have some separation between the countries. All right. So as you can see, for all the countries that we've specified, it works. Starts with India. Here are the top five trending searches, daily trending searches. Um, could be from today, yesterday, two days ago. But these are the last ones. United States. Now, if we take a look at United States, I'm going to minimize this for a second. You will see that this is basically the part that we see here. So Joe Clark, number one, starting from zero, then Mitch McConnell, Luke Leto, and so on. Full moon, December, and so on. So this is the part it, that this is why I mentioned, if you take a look at the real time search trends, this one would not match with what we have as results for the United States. So keep that in mind that, um, that the source or the the output that we get is coming from the daily search trends and not from the real time search trends. Um, then the second thing that you need to keep in mind is that when specifying the countries, they have to be all lowercase letters. If you have an uppercase, you get an error, but you can clearly see what that is related to. And the last part is um, that not all countries are available. In fact, this is the list of countries and it, it's, it is the case that some countries are not in the list. So you cannot use it for all the countries in the world. But it, I think it's quite a nice way to access the data. And if you are displaying this to another website, you can easily scrape this from Google, store it in your database, and then show it uh, on your website or whatever you, you need to have the data in. And that would be all regarding this tutorial as well as the PyTrends tutorial series. And looking forward to seeing you in the next video.